Hello and welcome to Safe Pasture. My name is Sherry Hammers and today we are continuing on our study in Andrew Murray's book called The Holiest of All. Today is chapter 22 and it's called On Hearing the Voice of God. And he starts off with this passage out of Hebrews. Hebrews 3, 7 through 11. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation, in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said, They do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. I swear in my wrath they shall not enter into my rest. And he says here, the words of the quotation first point us to what is the great privilege of God's people. They hear his voice, then to their great danger, hardening the heart against that voice. So we we have a privilege, we're, we're hearing God's voice, and we're in great danger of if we don't heed that voice, then we harden our heart. If we hear God, every time we hear God and we don't obey him, we harden our heart just a little more. He says, As the soil must be broken up by the plow and softened by the rain, so a broken, tender spirit is the first requisite for receiving blessing from God's word, or being in truth made partakers of God's grace. As we read in Isaiah, To this man will I look, even to him that is poor, and of a contrite heart, and trembleth at my word. When this disposition exists and thirsty heart truly waits for divine teaching and the circumcised ear opens to receive it, God's voice will bring real life and blessing and be the power of living fellowship with himself. Where, is it, where it is wanting, the word remains unfruitful and we go backward, however much head and mouth be filled with Bible truth. I thought that was really interesting. He's saying... It doesn't matter how much Bible you have in your head and how much Bible you speak out of your mouth. <clears throat> he said that word, excuse me, that word remains unfruitful. Because if it's not, how did he put it, where it's wanting um, living fellowship, the power of living fellowship. If a person is not truly wanting God, uh, especially, your, you got to check your motives. I guess I'll, that's the best way of putting it. Like, what are you wanting out of the Word of God? Are you wanting to sound spiritual? Or are you really wanting a heart change? He says, wherefore, he repeats the scripture, wherefore, even as the Holy Ghost saith, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. It is not difficult to say what it is that hardens the hearts, Andrew says. Listen carefully. This is, this is where the rubber meets the road in life. The seed sown by the wayside could not enter the soil because it had been trodden down by the passers-by. When the world with its business and its interests has at all times a free passage, the heart loses its tenderness. I think it's interesting. He's talking about, you know, how Jesus talked about in, I think, Mark 4, about the, the soil, the four soils. And remember, the wayside was trodden down. Andrew's saying here, when you're doing business with the world, that creates some of that traffic that's tromping down the soil and making it hard. He said the heart loses its tenderness. When we trust too much in the... the start over again. When we trust too much to the intellect and religion, and very great care is not taken to take each word as from God into the heart, into its life and love, the heart gets closed to the living voice of God. So he's saying in things that are of a spiritual nature, like, you know, religion or um, just spirituality, I guess the best way to say it, when he said, when you're making that a matter of intellect and it's not uh, a matter of taking each word carefully into your heart, as, as from God, then you're in danger of your heart getting closed to the living voice of God. That's what he says here. The heart gets closed to the living voice of God. And we all know about things in, in things of media where there's like a lot of um, desensitizing. 
desensitizing people to say violence, to murder, to those kinds of things, we can actually desensitize our hearts to the living voice of God. Isn't that tragic? That you can be over here dealing with all this spirituality and all the while you're hardening your heart toward God. It says the mind is satisfied with beautiful thoughts and pleasant feelings, but the heart does not hear God. That's, that gives me chills. So we can be thinking about all these wonderful things, mentally ascending to all of these, these thoughts and feelings, but the heart does not hear God. And let me just take a little aside right here and talk about feelings. The, there is so much drama uh, going on in the culture. I mean, people get caught up in drama, but they're, they're not taking care of their heart. They, they get all wrapped up in feelings and emotions and, and you know, that's, and, and they're not taking care of their heart. Remember, in I think it's Proverbs 4 verse 1, it says, above all else, Above everything else, guard your heart, for out of it are the issues of life. So if we're not guarding our heart against the, the mental ascent, against drama, against all this feelings-oriented, feeling-driven life, and we're, we're in the process of closing our hearts, we're not hearing God. If you can't hear God... That's the hugest problem in your life. Maybe hugest isn't a word, but if you are not hearing God, you don't have spiritual life in you. You've got to hear God. That's why his word is called the living word. Because when you as a born again believer with the spirit of God dwelling in your heart, when you open that book and you read it and you ask, I mean, this is what I pray every time I open my Bible is that um, you know Jesus said when the spirit of when the spirit of truth comes he will guide you into all the truth he will he will guide you into all truth so I want all truth I want him to lead me I don't want my flesh involved I don't want to mentally ascend to things I don't want my feelings involved I want the Holy Spirit to lead my heart and if we're not doing that if we're not providing protection and guarding our heart the way Scripture tells us to in Proverbs four then we are leaving these things vulnerable. All the things of our life are then vulnerable to whatever's out in the world and in our own flesh. All right, I'll go on. <clears throat> uh, when we are secretly content with our religion, our sound doctrine and Christian life, unconsciously but surely, the heart gets hardened. Okay, so don't all of those things sound very... Um, don't all those things sound very spiritual? Like we're, we're talking about religion. We're talking about sound doctrine. We're talking about things of Christianity. But if we're content with those things and we're not seeking God in our hearts, then Andrew says unconsciously but surely the heart gets hardened. When our life does not seek to keep pace with our knowledge and we have more pleasure in hearing and knowing than obeying and doing, we utterly lose the meekness to which the promise is given. And he goes on. So I'm going to stop right there. But So he's saying when our life does not keep pace with our knowledge, what does he mean by that? I think he means that God is revealing things to us. He's telling us, These, this is what I want you to do. This is what I don't want you to do. You know, this is where God's leading you in a certain area of your life. But when your life doesn't rise to that and do it, Remember what Jesus, when he gave the parable about the two sons, <clears throat> the father went to the first son and said, son, go out in the field and work. And he said, no, I won't. I don't feel like it. But then later on, he, he felt convicted and he went out and worked. And then he went to the second son and he said, son, go out in the field and work. And he said, yes, father, I will. But he didn't go do it. Jesus said, which one of these obeyed? And it's, <clears throat> the point is, excuse me, the point is, is the action. The first guy, yeah, he didn't, he didn't do the right thing at first, but then he repented and then he took action and he obeyed. The second one just gave lip service. You know, there's a scripture, maybe we can put it up there. It says, God is saying, 
These people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. See, God, God does not want you to mentally ascend to something and then even say it with your mouth. Oh, I'm going to go do that. That'd be great. You know, and give him lip service. God said he, he wants the heart. He wants the motives of your heart to be pure. And he wants your heart to be, be driven uh, by pure motives. And, but actually to do something. Not to just think about the good things to do, but to actually go out and do it. That's where fruit bearing comes in. So let me start at the beginning of his sentence again. He says, When our life does not seek to keep pace with our knowledge, and we have more pleasure in hearing and knowing than obeying and doing the action, we utterly lose the meekness to which the promise is given. And amidst all the pleasing forms of godliness, the heart is too hard to discern the voice of the Spirit. <sighs> well, I got to stop right there and address this too. You cannot, um, you cannot be just kind of a part-time believer. Okay. Like you can't, it can't all just be on your terms. Yeah. When I feel like obeying you, God, I will. And then at other times I'm just not going to, and I'm just going to talk like I do. God's not fooled. And you know, what's the old saying? You can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all the people all the time. You never fool God ever. But you, you might fool some people with your words, but eventually if those people hang around you long enough, they're going to see that your heart really wasn't in it and didn't really drive you. And what I'm saying is like, there's going to come a day and right now time just seems to be speeding up. So that day is hastening uh, to come when you're going to understand in no uncertain terms, that you literally need to hear the voice of God to survive. And you can't just in that moment be like, okay, I, I, I've hardened my heart all this time against the Holy Spirit, but now, God, I really need to hear you. Well, I'm not saying God couldn't do that because God can do whatever God wants to do within, his, within who he is. But I'm saying you can't be selectively, that's the word I was looking for, you can't be selectively um, hearing the voice of God. Because your heart, once it's hardened, that took, that took time. Like when Jesus talked about that soil by the wayside that was trodden down, I mean, that took a lot of feet, that took a lot of days of people walking over the same path, over the same area, you know, you, you can't really unpeel all of your years and years and years of hardening your heart against God. And in an instant that you need to hear him, you're going to hear him. And I'm not saying God couldn't do that. I'm just saying that the principles of the way the word works is that you cultivate these things in your life. You cultivate. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. And when he talked about sheep, I think I mentioned this a few videos back, but you know, we had a few sheep that we were taking in. Someone couldn't keep them anymore. And those sheep didn't know us from anybody, and they, they were scared. And it took a while before those sheep, you know, you have to be out there with them. You have to talk to them. You have to try to earn their trust. That doesn't happen overnight. And you're not overnight going to learn to hear the voice of God. Especially after years of, if you're walking uh, where you're in unbelief and you're letting your heart get hardened, you're not guarding your heart, like it, like it says in Proverbs 4, like we just mentioned. I'm just saying, it's a, okay, it's a dangerous way to live. It's a dangerous way to live where you repeatedly discipline, maybe, maybe lack of discipline, uh, you repeatedly harden your heart against God. You let, allow your heart to get hard. You repeatedly do that. It's not going to overnight not be hard. And I remember when God was teaching me about what Paul said about, maybe we can put this scripture up, about the root of bitterness causing defilement in, in many areas. He said, don't let a root of bitterness take root and cause defilement. Well, you know, if you harden your heart, let's say there's somebody in your life that really causes you problems and you, you really don't like this person, you resent them. Um, and, you know, over time, your heart is getting hard toward that person. Now, 
it, your heart doesn't selectively just get hard toward that person. Your heart gets hard. And you become hardened. You may not realize it, but you become hardened in all areas of your life. And I'm just saying it's a really dangerous place to allow yourself to go. It's a, it's a really big gamble. And it's not one that you're going to do well on in the outcome. Um, let me see where I was here. Okay. He says, more than all, when unbelief that walks by sight and looks at itself and all around in the light of this world. So unbelief doesn't walk by faith. It walks by sight. And it looks at everything in the light of the world. It is allowed to have its way. And the soul does not seek in childlike faith in, to live in the invisible as revealed in the word. The heart gets so hardened that God's word never enters. So when we have allowed our soul to get hardened through unbelief, and we're not walking in childlike faith to live in the invisible. You know, you have to, as a child of God, you have to live in the invisible. You believe in an invisible God. You believe in Jesus. Uh, you believe that when you got saved, that there was this transaction that happened in your heart, that you're never, uh, you've never um, been the same. I mean, God did this work in your heart. Those are all things that people that walk in unbelief cannot see that. And when you allow that kind of thing to come in, it's going to harden your heart. And, and just one more thing before we move on from that is that unbelief and hardness of heart, they don't happen overnight. They happen gradually. And um, it's, it's really, it's hard to, unless you're keeping vigilant over your heart, you're not going to even notice it's slipping in. Because that's how the enemy operates. He operates very stealthily. He operates very covertly. And you're not even going to notice this, this little poison has come into your heart. So Andrew goes on to say, The whole of religion and the whole of salvation consists in the state of the heart. God can do nothing for us in the way of imparting the blessings of redemption, but as he does it in the heart. So that's where everything happens. We ask Jesus into our heart. Our heart gets changed. God says, I'll take that heart of stone and I'll give you a heart of flesh. He says it in Ezekiel chapter 36. All of everything, salvation happens in the heart because the issues of life are in the heart. Um, he says, our knowledge of the words of God will profit nothing, but as the heart is open to receive himself to fulfill his words in us. So we can be, we can be reading the Bible till, you know, we're, we turn blue in the face till we fall asleep every day. I mean, we can, we can read it and do nothing else. But if we don't let it penetrate our heart, it's, you've wasted your time. Let our first care be a meek and lowly heart that waits on him. God speaks in his son to the heart and in the heart. It is in the heart that the voice and the son of God must be received. We shall bid all the world around us, all the world within us, to be silent, that we may hear aright the voice of the divine being speaking to us in the son of his love. So that's what we've got to do. We've got to tell this entire world. We've, we've got to tell it to be silent. You know, Jesus talked about going into the inner chamber to meet with the Father, to have our time with him. You know, there were times when Jesus would leave everybody, even the disciples, to go away to a solitary place to have time with the Father. And that's what we've got to do. How can we do less than Jesus did? How can we do less than him and expect to, to live a life in the, in, in the power of God and in a way that pleases God? He says, salvation will be found in these two things, God speaking to me in his Son, and my heart opening to hear his voice. That kind of reminds me of like a, a sun and a flower. You know, this God speaking. So it's, it's the sun shining down and the flower has to open to receive what the sun's giving. God speaking, we got to open our hearts to receive what he's giving us. His speaking gives and is salvation. The revelation of himself to my soul. That's salvation. God revealing himself to my soul. 
Let the work of my life be to hearken with a meek and tender spirit. God himself will draw our heart away from all else and open it to take heed. Let us ask this very earnestly. So he's saying he's, he's going to help us. He's going to draw our heart to him. But we've got to ask him to open our hearts. We've got to ask God to do these things. And I put a little note here. This is so needed in our world today, in the situation we're in today. We must know God's voice to navigate what has been prophesied is coming on the earth. And he finishes with this. Nothing so effectually hinders hearing God's voice as opening the heart too much to other voices. So we can be, we can be yeah, God, I want to hear your voice. And we've got a hundred other distractions. We're not going to hear the voice of God. We're just not going to hear it. A heart too deeply interested in the news, the literature, the society, again, social media, of this world cannot hear the divine voice. It needs stillness, retirement, concentration to give God the heed he claims. So we've got to, we've got to shut out the world. We've got to shut out the distractions. And maybe you don't know exactly what those distractions are. Just ask the Holy Spirit to show you. Say, what is keeping me from hearing you? What, what's blocking the signal? Um, what's, what's keeping that? keeping your voice from coming through clearly to me. Um, there's so many voices in our world today, and we really got to stop and listen to that one voice. Oh, I know. I, yeah, there was something I was like, I, I, wanted, I was trying to remember. A little thought came to my head, and then it kind of was, um, I, it was going. But I remember what it was. Remember when Jesus, when John the Baptist was baptizing Jesus in the River Jordan? And it says that, um, the voice of God came from heaven and you know the, the, the Holy Spirit came down in the form of a dove. But they heard a voice from heaven. And this happened a few times. Maybe it wasn't at the baptism, but there were a few times that the voice of God was heard from heaven. And most of the people thought it thundered. Right? So they heard the voice, but they were not in tune and seeking God to the point where they could even understand what he was saying. It thundered. You know, I, I want to hear what God's saying to me. I don't want it to be like muffled or messed up or, you know, it's not a clear signal. I want to be in the very heartbeat of God. And I hope that this teaching today has you wanting the same. Well, God bless you for joining me. Thanks again and see you next time.